reactions grasped from a dramatic past, a galactic battle or a massive heart sweeping.
much time for fighting. One to put it on. There was a skeleton. He sat there in the middle of the road. And, and finally, so a car came by and went, Pow! And he went, Pow! And one time there was a vampire. And his grandpa told him not to change into an alien. But he did. And he got into trouble. And he and you know what he did? He turned him into a bat. A skeleton.
one trusty and well.
Hello, uh, this is East Junior Forest uh, doing a commentary on my first album, Halloween Tape. Now, uh, I did this quite a while ago. A lot of these recordings age back to 1999. I was using, at that time, Sound Recorder on a 486 PC to multi-track, and a few of those songs are on there, like Static Crystal, I think was multi-tracked on the computer, as well as Who Is Talking, and possibly some early versions of Trick or Treat were done on a computer as well. But for the most part, most of them were done on a Tascam 4-track, which were being produced at the time uh, for home recording, multi-tracking. It was a very simple sort of device. It was like a tape recorder, inputs, and you selected the track you wanted to record on. It recorded on on a tape cassette, you know, just any old regular tape cassette, and there were there's four tracks on a tape cassette. The only difference was it always recorded. It was a double-sided, you know, a tape recorder. So basically, it could record on all four sides, or not all four sides, but both sides of the tape to make a, uh, you know, you could put drums on one track, you could put vocals on another track, you could put guitar on another track and some other sort of percussion or guitar on another track creating four separate tracks and then you could balance them out and equalize them as best you could on the device. It was very simple but uh, that's what I did back then. A few notes on songs. At the beginning of Static Crystal you can hear like this sort of staticky sound. Uh, that was uh, CB radio transmissions that I recorded on another tape as well as uh, uh, regular radio transmissions on AM stations and by it was old-fashioned radio I'd turn the knob and it pick up like those high-pitched squalls and I'd uh, it did that live previous to putting them into the device and putting the song at the end of it both the song was recorded into a computer and then outputted into the multi-track there's a point at the end of it at the end of the staticky sounds where you can hear the song Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys you can hear the organ come in and kind of some vocals come in. On the history of Darkness and Light, uh, that guitar sound was done through an amplifier that my friend James lent me. And I loved that amplifier. I wish he gave it to me, but he ended up selling it. And uh, it had like a really cool reverb sound on it. Uh, a lot of the songs that don't have uh, any vocals, I really appreciate because... Like the microphone that I was using was a Radio Shack microphone, and when you whenever I use it, it had like a hiss to it. It was definitely apparent that it was you know on, because <laughs> it picked up a lot of extra sound. And I tried to minimize it as best I could. Like whenever I remember singing into the microphone, I had to be really really still, or else that you'd hear like any sort of popping or crackling from the cord. So it was really kind of hard to sing into and not be still. I remember taking many takes of myself singing just because I wiggled a little bit or moved to get the track done right and nothing's perfect on the thing. So you hear everything that you know that I could minimalize as best I could. Uh, Who is Talking was inspired by Bikini Kill <laughs> slash K Kathleen Hanna lyrics. I don't know why but I was really into them at the time. Uh, you could definitely hear it and the way I was singing it's kind of Kathleen Hanna-ish. The backing track was done on a computer, 46, through sound recorder, multi-tracked, and then inputted into the, the device. I think the uh, drums were done separately. Uh, Ghost Buildings was myself trying to be the Beach Boys, and I recorded that at my dad's house. My dad was gone out of town, and he let me you know, come to his house and do whatever I wanted and I particularly chose to record. Uh, I really like the breakdown, the instrumental bit, the ooh, ah, ooh, whatever I did back then. When the Goblins Cry has a really cool intro. <laughs> I have I just listened to the album just now, and I haven't heard it since about 2004, and that's when I was passing out tapes of this, this album. It was a 30-minute tape. I put everything I could into it as best I could using the technology I had. When the Goblins Cry has a pretty cool intro. I was impressed. It has, I don't even know how I played that. I can't even... I remember the chords to this actual song, but the intro is a whole other story. Uh, also, this subject matter of 
when the goblins cry seems to have like a bigger perspective to it uh i was broadening my or my personal image of the world at that time still learning about you know people concepts new ideas and uh you can definitely tell in the lyrics that i was growing up in a sense Owl Dance Fantasia. That's me trying to do uh, songs like uh, Let's Go Away for a While and Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. Uh, I was really into the, I really liked the melodic changes those two songs had on Pet Sounds. You can hear it a little bit. I, I know I can hear it because I made it. But um, I can hear it in those songs, that uh, those, those instrumentals on uh, Halloween tape as a whole. I can hear me trying to be the Beach Boys. Rats and Snakes, it was recorded in Athens. I had like a medieval thing going on. I don't know. The whole thing has a bit of a medieval thing, feeling to it, but uh, this song definitely has medieval uh, chords to it, and I really like that. Echolocation Madness, that was one of the first songs I ever wrote. One, first one or two songs that I ever wrote. And I'm surprised at how good quality the... Uh, the final recording came out. Sounds good. I like it. Trick or Treat. That's a song that was never put on the album, but it was intended to be like the first track of the record. I didn't put it on there because I didn't like how I sang it. I was like a little whiny kid. and I didn't want to sound like a little whiny kid. The intro to it, you know, Trick or Treat. There's a story behind the intro. There's this girl I was friends with on the internet at the time named Cleo, and she lived in Calvary, Canada. We chat on the online, and I, one time I asked her, "Hey, would you like to send me like a, a audio file of you saying trick or treat in as many different voices as you can?" And she replied and sent it back to me. And I use that as the intro to trick or treat the song. I think it's a good outtake to put on here because it applies to the uh, whole trick or treat Halloween theme that I was going for at the time. Crazy Clocks wasn't put on the album, though it was recorded to be on the album, and it wasn't put on there basically because it was too many recordings. I had already, all the other recordings filled up 30 minutes of time, and the tape had 15 minutes on each side, so this little, what, four minute some odd track couldn't fit. Uh, there's another recording that was never put on the album, it's called 1986 Recordings. And uh, it was me as a kid reading a Halloween story that I wrote. My friend James makes fun of me because he heard the tape one time. Because I say the word bat really funny. It's like, bat. <laughs> I don't remember how else I said it. But every once in a while, my friend James will go, bat. And I'll be like, yeah, ha, ha. Yeah, I said bat weird. <laughs> but um, overall, I think it's an interesting little album. I... Uh, did a pretty good job on my own mixing and making the audio sound as best as I could <laughs> for its time. I'm going to try to get my friend uh, Dave to make a little audio commentary on the album as well. Dave, when I moved to Athens, somehow he got a copy of Halloween Tape, and he lived in Connecticut. He moved to Athens soon after he heard my tape, and uh, we became friends after that. So, And he's he really likes my Halloween Tape album, so I'm going to try to get him to do a commentary on this as well. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this. Thank you. Bye.